What is up guys? My name is Les, day number two here in Los Angeles, California, and today we are playing at the Hustler Casino. Today is a 5-5-10 game, $1,500 max buy-in, a little warm-up for my session tomorrow on the Hustler live stream, which is going to be a massive 10, 20, 40 game, 20k buy-ins. Let's see how it goes today. Let's try to run good. Let's get down to the table. Let's get to the action. Let's go. I hope you guys are ready for a crazy swingy roller coaster session here at the Hustler. There's a raise to 35 in this first hand in the hijack. I decided to 3 bet ace 10 offsuit. My hand isn't too strong. I'd rather 3 bet, turn it into a semi bluff. If I get called, I can play here heads up in position, which is exactly what happens. We go to the flop of 5 5 3 rainbow. Now, with ace high, I do completely miss, but I should be ahead of my opponent a decent amount of the time. I decide to bet $80 and he makes the call. Once my opponent calls pre-flop out of position and then calls on this flop, I put him mostly on middling pocket pairs like pocket 7s through pocket 10s. So when the turn card's a king, I feel like it's a great card to continue to barrel. I can have aces, ace-king, king-queen. So I decide to go a little bit smaller according to the size of the pot. I bet 120 and it gets the job done. My opponent folds. That first hand was a little bit slow, but don't you worry, things are about to change and heat up, and it starts here with Pocket Kings. The same player from last hand raises now in the low jack to $35. I actually have a premium now with Kings in 3-bet to 110 bucks. The button comes along with a cold call for $110, and now the action's back over on the initial raiser in the hijack. He doesn't fold right away, and he doesn't call right away, and he is thinking now in the tank, which makes me think... He may be putting in a 4-bet, which is great news when you're holding pocket kings. My opponent in the low jack started the hand with about $1,600. If he re-raises here, we'll probably just try to get it all in, which is exactly what happens. The low jack player 4-bets to $400. Now, I already know exactly what I'm going to do, but I have to take my time. I don't want to make it look too easy. So I look back at my hand. Yep, kings, I still got them. After about a 30 second Hollywood tank, I decide to five bet jam for around $1,500. Button makes to full, but the low jack snap calls me. Not a great sign. He could have aces here. We decide to run out the board one time. Kings may be good. Maybe we're up against ace king. We have to hold. He could have queens. Let's see what the run out brings. <laughs> Well, we got it in good. Pocket kings to ace king. Five bet jam pot pre flop and an ace on the river. We end up losing around a $3,000 pot here, down about $1,500 right off the rip. I rebuy for another $1,500 stack. I notoriously run bad with ace king. I'm not really superstitious, just a little stitious, but I feel like I always lose with ace king. I either lose against it or I lose when I have it. Anyway, trying to get my money back here, there is a hijack raised to 55 over a $20 straddle. I have king jack offsuit in the big blind, decide to three bet to 225 bucks. My opponent makes the call with around $1,100 left in his stack. We go heads up here at a position to deuce five, six, two hearts. I do completely miss on this board. I could see bet, but I decide to slow down here and check over to my opponent, who now puts out a bet of $220. After this bet, I slowly glance over at my opponent's stack. He's got about $900 left. Now, once he calls preflop and bets his flop, he could have some middling pocket pairs, but given the fact that he didn't 4-bet preflop, he shouldn't have aces, kings, queens, or jacks. I can have all those strong hands as well. I can't really call here out of position for $220 with king high. However, I don't want to just fold and give up this pot. He could easily be betting a smaller pocket pair, ace high or king high. So I decided to get a little bit funky here and check jam all in for his $900 stack. Luckily for us, he snap folds. This was kind of a wild play. I didn't even have a straight draw or flush draw. I just jammed all in. However, I felt like if he had a middling pocket pair, it would put him in a tough spot. It turned out he probably didn't have anything at all, and we get a little bit back from that pocket king's hand. Moving forward, the low jack calls $10 in this hand. The high jack calls $10, and in the big blind with ace-10 offsuit, I bump it up to 60 bucks, and both of my opponents make the call. So we're heading here three ways to an ace Ace, nine, three rainbow board. With top pair on such a dry, unconnected board, I decide to check out of position. 
Low jack player checks, and now the high jack player bets $50. I proceed with a call for $50 out of position, and the low jack player calls as well. The reason I check here is just to get some information from my opponents, allow them to bet weaker hands or bluff, and also to somewhat underrep my hand as well. Well, three ways now to another ace on the turn, giving me trips with a 10 kicker. I check, low jack player checks, and now the high jack player who bet the flop continues to bet now for $120. Well, once he bets to flop and now continues again here on the turn, I think a lot of the time he's going to have a 9x hand, or sometimes he could have an ace x hand as well. Given the fact that my opponent just called preflop, I don't think he's going to have a stronger ace than me, so I decide to raise it up here with my trips. To spring the trap, I make it $425. Low jack player gets out of the way, and then to my surprise... The hijack player snap three bet jams all in for two thousand dollars more. I thought you might have pocket threes. I'm gonna make a very, very, very tight lay down. I think you cover me, right? Maybe you got a nice. You run it twice. You're the one person, one timer? For this pot, one time. Well, maybe I can't fold. Immediately, my gut reaction was to fold my hand, but then once I started thinking about it a little bit more, I thought, well, could I ever fold a hand this strong? If we rewind back to preflop, this particular player over limped for $10 in the hijack. Now, after watching him play for the past two hours, I know he'd never be over limping with a hand like ace-king, ace-queen, or ace-jack, which means we can discount him from having trips with a better kicker than ours. Now, I also think he'd be raising pocket nines preflop as well, so we can discount him from having pocket nines for a full house. We can also think of some other hands that we're losing to, which is ace-nine and ace-three. However, I don't think he's calling a $60 raise preflop with ace-nine offsuit, and there's actually zero combinations of ace-nine suited left. There's also only one combination of ace three suited, which is ace three of clubs. Like I said, I don't think he's calling preflop with offsuit aces. I also don't think he'd be jamming all in with ace nine or ace three as well. So that leaves only one hand we're losing to, which is pocket threes. Now, pocket threes would over limp in the hijack and call a $60 raise. Pocket threes would definitely bet the flop with bottom set when checked to. Pocket threes would definitely bet the turn when improving to a full house. And then once raised, maybe pocket threes would just jam all in because he's afraid I've got ace king or ace queen. He doesn't want me to suck out on him. So pocket threes is definitely possible, but... Could we fold a hand this strong when we're only losing to one hand? We are still beating a lot of hands like ace-deuce, ace-four, ace-five suited, ace-six, ace-seven, ace-eight suited. It's also possible he could have a random 9x hand that he feels like is good. He could have a crazy bluff like four or five suited for a gut shot straight draw. I did check call the flop and check raise the turn. Honestly, I don't think I can fold, so I make the call. He asked me to go twice. I tell him one time. Let's see what happens here on the river. You, you only want to do once? Hang on. Yeah, I always go once. Okay. That game can be really good. Threes? Yeah. Good hand. Only lose the one hand. All that talk, all that analysis, all those breakdowns in my head, and we lose to the one hand we thought we would be losing to. Unfortunately, my opponent covers me here, so I end up losing like almost $3,000 in this pot, maybe $2,500. This one did hurt. I mean, it's a huge pot to lose at 5 5 10. I guess I could have hero folded there on the turn. I was feeling like I wasn't any good, but honestly, what was going through my mind was just about a week and a half ago, I folded pocket queens in a four bet pot when my opponent jammed all in and he had pocket nines. I just didn't feel like folding my hand. Unfortunately, we get stacked. I could leave and call it a day, but the game is still pretty good. So I rebuy for another $1,500, try to get some of my money back. The one positive note here is that we are doing $20 straddles under the gun, which bumps up the stakes. It allows me to potentially get my money back sooner. Well, in this hand, there's a limp for $20 with king queen offsuit in the small blind. I raised to 135. Big blind calls 135. Straddle calls 135. 
Now the limper calls 135 and just like that, we are going four ways over $500 in the pot already to a flop of queen, 10, eight, rainbow. I flop chop pair, but this board is very connected. There is some two pairs and some straights my opponents can have. At position multi-way, I decide to slow down and check. Now the big blind checks, straddle checks, and now the cutoff player who seems to be a very action player puts out a bet of 220 bucks. I glance over at his stack and it looks like he's got about $1,400 behind. He limped in the cutoff, so he shouldn't have pocket eights or pocket tens for a set. He could have two pair here, but I feel like those hands might bet a little bit bigger. He could have flopped a straight, but in all honesty, with the $20 straddle on and such a big bloated pot already with top pair, a good top pair at that, I feel like we could just jam all in here and definitely get called by worse hands by this action player. We could get called by worse queen X hands, pair plus straight draw hands, so I decided to just go with it. I jam all in for $1,500. Big blind snap folds, straddle folds, back over here on the cutoff, who thinks for a little bit of time, he actually answers his phone and starts speaking in Spanish. I don't know if he's calling his poker coach. Just kidding. I know he's not doing that. I actually thought maybe he could be slow rolling me here on accident. But eventually he hangs up the phone call. He looks back at his cards and he thinks for over a minute and eventually he calls just like that. Another big pot, about $3,500 in the middle. We're already stuck heaps on the day. If we could win this pot, we can definitely get some back. Let's see what the run out brings. Okay, nice. Oh. Boy, the turn was a seven and river six, and my opponent has eight nine offsuit for a straight on the river. He called my all in for $1,400 with bottom pair and a gut shot and went runner runner to win. That actually is a really bad beat, especially when you're down heaps already on the session. After losing this pot, I'm now down $5,000 at this 5-5-10 game. After this rebuy, I'm actually in the game for $7,000 now, down about 5K. Pretty comical for this level. I was about to leave, but the game is still straddling. I switch seats. Maybe we'll get some better luck over here. Well, with the round of 20 on, I raised to 100 with pocket jacks. In the small blind, big blind calls, straddle calls, which is Mr. 8-9 offsuit. And we go three ways to an ace high board. I bet small here and only the straddle makes the call. Turn card pairs the board. I check and he checks behind. River card, bink, jack, full house. All right, this seat change was good for us. I bet out super tiny trying to get called here. I make it 125 and he does call with ace three offsuit and we win a small pot. I might be getting completely crushed this session, but nobody likes a quitter. In this hand, I raised to $140 with pocket nines over two $20 limps. I'm here in the cutoff. In position, pocket nines, three ways to queen, nine, four, two clubs, flopping a set. Finally, the cards are turning around in my direction. Let's get some of our money back. My opponent's check to me. I bet 150 and only the hijack makes to call. We're now heads up to another nine on the turn. Quads for us. My opponent checks. I bet 200. And now my opponent decides to raise all in. Yes, sir. I got a call, man. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, God. God. Oops. I think you cover. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Can we run it twice? <laughs> all right poker gods are liking us a little bit now we made a full house with pocket jacks we made quads with pocket nines and we get paid off winning over a two thousand dollar pot our stack is now around 3600 but remember we're in the game for 7k still down about 3500 dollars on the day but it's not over i'm not quitting 
until I get all my money back. If you want to get your money back in poker, you gotta play big pots. So I decided to three bet here with ace five suited in the straddle. There's an earlier position raised to 50 by the action player, the eight nine offsuit guy. There's a button call for 50. I pop it here to $275. A squeeze play trying to take down this dead money and if I get called I can play a pot with Mr. 8-9 offsuit and maybe get a little bit of my money back from that first hand. Well I kind of get what I want but kind of not when I end up getting two callers here pre-flop. We've got almost a thousand dollars in the middle ace five suited and the board comes out ace high with a king and a jack. A good flop giving me top pair. However, our kicker isn't too strong. There is some straights and other two pairs out there. I start out with a $200 bet. The action player makes to call and the button makes to fold. We're now heads up to the deuce of hearts on the turn. Given the fact that this guy loves to call pre-flop and loves to call on the flop, I still think I can bet for value here and get called by weaker hands. Hands like king x, jack x, pair plus straight draws. So I bet $350 and again, the action player makes the call. We are seeing a huge pot here. Ace five off suit in the river is an eight of clubs. Really shouldn't change anything at all unless he's got king eight or jack eight. However, in a three bet pot after betting flop and turn, I decide to slow down and check. He checks back. I show ace five for top pair and he shows pocket tens for fourth pair, a gut shot straight draw. Calls on the flop and calls on the turn, praying for a gut shot. He doesn't hit it this time, and we do win a decent pot. Over the next hour, I continue to win some small to medium-sized pots and slowly grind my way back to a $6,000 stack. In the game for 7K, at one point I was down over $5,000. Now I'm only down 1K. It's definitely possible to get unstuck and get even on this session, and we're not going to stop until we get there. The only issue I'm facing here is that I'm slightly tired from traveling the day before. The day after this, I have a huge Hustler live stream that I want to get ready for, but the game is still pretty good. Mr. 8-9 Offsuit Action Player still has almost $4,000 in his stack. It's pretty hard to leave a game when this guy's playing almost every single hand. So we're still in here now with Pocket Kings. I raised to $80 and the Action Player makes a call. Heads up here out of position to a jack high board. Perfect flop for us. I bet out $100 and he makes the call. Turn king of spades, another set for us. Honestly, it's a great card, but it's not my favorite card because now if he has an eight or a jack, it's gonna be a scare card. But against this particular player who just loves to call, I'm gonna continue to bet and bet big. There's so many hands we can get called by here. Straight draws, flush draws, jack x hands. I mean, he called me down with pocket tens on an ace king jack board just a little bit earlier. I bet $285 my opponent looks back at his cards. If he calls here, we could win another big pot and get completely unstuck on the session, but he folds and we win. And after this pot, he ends up leaving. The table doesn't look as good. So I decide to call it a day after six hours of playing, getting completely unstuck, cashing out for almost a $7,000 stack. I think that may be one of the sicker comebacks I've ever made at a 510 game. I was getting absolutely crushed when I first sat down. All in with pocket kings versus ace king, ace on the river, lose a 3k pot. Then I get cooler trip aces versus a full house for a 5,000 plus dollar pot. I then get it all in really good with top pair versus third pair and my opponent goes runner runner straight to lose another 3k plus pot. At one point I was down over $5,000 in the game for 7k but i kept grinding i kept playing and things did turn around in my direction i made quad nines want a pot with pocket jacks want a nice pot with ace five suited when i three bet preflop want a pot with kings and i clawed all the way back to almost even i've been playing now for almost seven hours i'm tired the game is not as good as it used to be and i basically am even on the day so i will call that a win going from down 5k to even is pretty nice tomorrow I play probably one of the biggest games I've ever played, 10, 20, 40 
on the Hustler live stream. I'm risking $35,000 for that game. That's going to be next video. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Hopefully it's very exciting. I could win 30K. I could lose 30K. We'll see what happens, but I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to rest up for that. I'm excited for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Very swingy, crazy session. Please like, please subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions or anything like that. And until next time, I'll see you.